We are breaking in for a news conference from Detroit Police in the 9th Precinct. We are expecting an update on 14 day old twins that have been recently found after being reported missing this morning. We're going to listen into that news conference happening now. Special Victims Unit, uh, everyone, everyone, when you hear that your children are involved, everyone uh, put in a lot of work and we have the best outcome possible that the two kids have been recovered. Uh, I want to thank the community. Um, could not be more grateful to the community than we are that, that whatever happened, they had the confidence to come into this precinct and drop these two babies off. Uh, and we were able to get them to the hospital uh, and where they're being treated. They're in good condition, uh, being checked out at a local hospital. Uh, again, a lot of questions I know you will have. You won't have a lot of answers, but I'm going to turn it over uh, to Captain Yan from the Livonia Police Department to provide you some insight. Uh, last night at approximately 10.10 in the evening, we received a call from a woman that reported her children missing from a local hotel in our city. Uh, the children were 14 days old, and we immediately began an investigation into their disappearance with the state police, the FBI, the Detroit Police Department, and an Amber Alert was sent out, and today the children were dropped off here safe and sound at the 9th Precinct. We're very grateful for the collaborative law enforcement effort between all the agencies involved and that the children are safe. Currently, they're being evaluated at the hospital and making sure that they're okay and eventually will be reunited with their mother. This is an ongoing investigation, so I really don't have much more to say on that portion of why the children were abducted, but once that becomes available, we'll get in touch with you guys. Captain, full name and spelling, please. My last name is spelled Y-O-N as in Nora. First name? Gregory. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, any, any questions? Are we still calling this an abduction? I'm going to turn it over to the FBI for those answers. <laughs> That's what I should have done in the first place. Uh, Devin Kowalski, acting special agent in charge of the FBI field office here in Michigan. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the law enforcement community across the state police, Livonia Police Department leading the investigation, Detroit Police Department, and the members uh, of the FBI F, uh, Detroit field office for their quick response. Uh, the, the community here um, enjoys incredible collaboration across all the law enforcement partner, uh, partners that we have, and so we stand uh, with uh, our law enforcement partners and the community to be responsive to the needs. Uh, it wasn't long ago that we were standing out here uh, delivering some different news. So I'm, I'm very proud of the law enforcement effort. I'm, I'm very appreciative of the community. And um, uh, thank you. Chief, anybody in custody right now will be questioned? Uh, Livonia is doing that part of the investigation. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of questions to be asked. As of right now, no one is in custody. Um, but, you know, again, it's a wide open investigation, so we just have to see exactly what they're looking at. But they're going to be the lead in the investigation. Um, the support that the collaborative effort and support has been fantastic. Uh, the command team, the officers here at the 9th Precinct, uh, FBI, Livonia, uh, and those children are safe, which is, again, the best outcome we could possibly have. No, um, I'm not going to get too far into it because that's part of the investigation, but um, they were safely brought inside the precinct, made contact with an officer on the desk. As you can imagine, the entire precinct was on high alert. Uh, we got the same Amber Alert that you all had or got. And uh, so to see them walk in with the, the, with the two babies, we were all very, very happy. Uh, but then we have to get into make sure that they're okay and get them to the hospital. So the officers went right into that mold, quickly getting them over to the hospital. Uh, to make sure that they were treated in and, and, uh, and, and good condition. Chief, what Chief, time who brought them in? Who brought them in, Chief? Uh, 9.30, and I'm not going to tell you who, uh, because that could, that could hurt uh, the investigation for Livonia because it's not ours. Uh, but I'm sure Livonia's going to update that when they can. Captain, can you tell us what, what happened? Can you break it down for us? We, How do these kids end up missing from this quality? As I, mic, sir. Thank you. as I explained, uh, the lady left them with uh, two friends, and when she came back, they were gone. And I'm going to leave that. They were friendly acquaintances. So that's pretty much all I can say at this point because we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened and why they disappeared to begin with. Where's the kid's mom? She's with us. With you guys? Yep. Is she under arrest? Nope.
So we're looking to reunite everybody. Why so. were they at the hotel and they were brought them there? Not at this time, no. Does her story add up that the family is saying that she went for a pop and the kids are gone? That, uh, that is part of the investigation, so I'm not going to elaborate on any of that. So. When they are turned over, you had mentioned turned over to mom. Is that accurate? That's the whole chess, yes. We're just going to leave it at that right now. It's not in custody as of now. Are you still looking for it then? Of course. Mr. Gillespie, can you talk to us about the car team and how they ended up playing a role in this uh, investigation? Uh, well, any, anytime uh, there's a situation like this, the full uh, weight of the FBI, the field office, headquarters, anything that we can bring uh, to bear to help our partners is we do. Um, and uh, the, the, the resources are, the CARD is one of those, a child abduction response team. Uh, and um, fortunately, uh, this situation resolved itself to where a full deployment was not necessary, uh, but everybody was uh, ready to go, embedded with the Livonia Police Department, doing conducting the logical uh, investigation to help find these, these children safely. Thank you. Not to get into semantics, but is the term abduction no longer appropriate? I can say it was reported as an abduction and that's how we took it and that's how we're treating it at this point as an abduction. Our crime scene unit and our detectives were all out there investigating this as an abduction and that is exactly why we had all of our partners here in law enforcement involved and obviously a positive resolution that came about because that's of that. All, that's all we have right now regarding that, regarding that situation. We understand. We'll ask, we'll ask other questions for the volume and the FBI. That's, that's for that investigation. We're completing that. Uh, Get it. And, you know, we got some more information to update, too. Okay, so we can follow up after. All right? All right. Um, Chief White, can I ask one more about the children brought here? Uh, and it may be reiterating, so I'm sorry. But they're in good health. I'm told they're at Children's Hospital being checked out. Anything else you can tell us about when they were brought here, their condition, etc. No, I, I mean, other than what you, what you have, they were brought here approximately 930, um, turned over uh, to the officers here. The officers did a marvelous job of getting them the, the, the health care that they needed um, and getting them checked out. We don't know if they needed health care, but they certainly have been out of the parents' custody for, for quite a while. Uh, they are stable. Um, I was told recently that they were in good condition. Um, no obvious injuries, and they're at a local hospital. So that's that's where we're at. Thank you. All right. Yes, um, fifteen thousand seven hundred block of Ward, approximately ten thirty last night. We had another incident of kids uh, finding an unsecured weapon. Uh, the investigation is wide open. We've got an adult that's responsible for the weapon in custody. Uh, we don't know exactly where that's going to go just yet. Uh, unfortunately, an eight-year-old lost his life. Um, we don't know exactly what transpired once the weapon was found. Uh, we're confident that um, it was an unsecure weapon that led to this tragedy. And we, we're always here talking about this. If you're going to have a gun, yeah, and you're going to be a gun owner, you have to be responsible. And unfortunately, we have a yet another situation where one of Detroit's children has been killed because an adult made a horrible decision to leave the gun unsecure. I beg your pardon? Uh, they're being cooperative. Um, as you can imagine, a um, very tragic situation for, for the mother and, and the person that we have in custody uh, is, is not related uh, to the child but known to the child. And uh, it's just horrible, horrible situation. Yeah, that case is also wide open. Um, we are investigating all angles. We're pulling our video assets. We're doing a, a number of things with this case. Um, we have reason. Let me say this. Uh, the information that we have is that there were people shooting uh, at each other. Uh, and possibly uh, the 72-year-old intervene. Um, we don't know if there's any validity to that yet, but that's an angle that we're looking at. Uh, we're running down a, a number of different leads on exactly what happened, um, but we do know this. We do know that a 19-year-old was killed. We do know that people were shooting at each other. 
uh, and we are looking into exactly what happened uh, from that point. So the preliminary information that I have is that it was between two groups and that the 72-year-old uh, person is more of a good Samaritan in, in, in what we're hearing. But again, it's a wide open case. Uh, we don't know if that's going to turn out to be truthful or not. Uh, but we are investigating all angles, including uh, perhaps charging him uh, at this time. But we just don't know enough yet to, to, to make a definitive decision at this point. But whatever we find, we're going to be turning over to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. But it's just a wide open, very confusing case. A lot of work needs to be done on it, a lot of evidence being pulled, a lot of video being pulled. And we're interviewing a lot of, a lot of witnesses and a few people that were there uh, that were engaged in the, in the conflict. All right. One last question. The, the individual people in this precinct, are they being investigated or are they just the Well, Livonia's got, got the investigation again. They're going to look at everything. They, they've got a lot of work to do, and we don't want to compromise their work by talking too much. Um, we want to make sure that we brief the community, thank the community for their support and the help. Everybody's been worried about, about this case, and we were certainly worried that, you know, not long ago we had a baby uh, that didn't have this outcome. And so we want to put everybody uh, at ease that this partnership and all the work that went into this, these babies are, are safely uh, and hopefully turned over to their parents soon if that's appropriate. Now, with regards to who turned them over to us and who's here, we really can't get into that. It'll be very irresponsible at this point. They've got a lot of investigation to do. Things have to be turned over to the prosecutor's office. And one inappropriate word for me could cause some problems. But thank you all very much. All right, we're just hearing from police there about that Amber Alert that was sent out today. We are told that those children are safe. Someone dropped them off at the police station around 930 today. The police say this was initially reported as an abduction, and that is how they're treating it. There's still a lot to figure out, and we'll keep following the story for you. We'll have more for you here on CBS News and CBS Detroit.